What Nvidia just did with DLSS could change gaming forever. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Alright, so real quick before we get into this new story, if you've been living under a rock, DLSS stands for Deep Learn Super Sampling, and it's a new technology that comes with the RTX cards from NVIDIA, and what this technology does is it takes a lower resolution image, such as one at 1080p or 720p, and then it uses these special tensor cores in the RTX cards to actually upscale that image into a larger resolution, such as 4K or even upwards of 8K resolution, and you know, this technology is really important because it allows you to get a whole lot more performance, and if it's actually done correctly, correctly, you don't really notice the difference, you know, using DLSS 4K versus native 4K. So it can be very, very important for getting a whole bunch more performance, though, you know, when it was first introduced, DLSS wasn't very impressive. I think it first was introduced with the game Battlefield 5. And in that game, it just didn't look very good. It made the scene look very blurry. So a lot of people uh, just didn't talk a whole lot about DLSS because it was kind of a joke. It didn't really look very good. And everyone thought that it was going to be a gimmick. But fast forward to today with DLSS 2.0 and this new DLSS technology is absolutely incredible. It's almost like magic. I mean, you turn on DLSS 2.0 in a game like Cyberpunk or Control, and you'll notice very little difference between DLSS being on if it's on the quality option versus it being off and running a native resolution. Now, in some games, such as Cyberpunk, there might be, you know, little things that you see that don't look quite right because it's not reconstructing 100% perfectly. But in general, when DLSS 2.0 is used correctly, you really can't tell much of a difference between it and 4K. So it just looks absolutely incredible. Can give you if you use maybe the performance version of DLSS and you downsample from a lower resolution such as 720p to 4k you could see upwards of maybe even two times the amount of FPS that you would normally get because you know your graphics card is only actually rendering 720p at that point and then the tensor cores are taking over from there and you're not having to run 4k so you're just saving a whole bunch of performance so that's why it's really important and it looks really really incredible today it works really good and this new update from Nvidia could absolutely change everything because I've been saying for a long time that in, if Nvidia Nvidia can get DLSS working globally, such as in the Nvidia control panel, it's going to be an absolute game changer. And recently they made one more step towards getting to that goal, at least in my opinion, because recently Nvidia announced that DLSS is now going to be working natively within the most popular game engine for creating games on Real Engine, which of course is very impressive and good to see. And hopefully this marks another step forward towards that end goal of potentially getting DLSS just working on your monitor on absolutely every image that comes across it. But let's go ahead and read what Nvidia had to say on it, and then I'll give you my thoughts. So over on NVIDIA's website, they had a press release that stated this, quote, as of today, Unreal Engine 4 UE4 developers can now access DLSS as a plugin for Unreal Engine 4.26. Additionally, NVIDIA Reflex is now available as a feature in Unreal Engine. They then wrap up the article by saying, quote, with our work with ray tracing, DLSS and Reflex, NVIDIA is revolutionizing what is possible from a GPU. Ray tracing and DLSS are supported in the biggest PC game launch ever, Cyberpunk 2077. Ray tracing and DLSS is supported in the most popular game, Minecraft. And Reflex has been adopted by seven of the top 10 competitive shooters, Call of Duty Warzone, Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War, Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Overwatch, and Rainbow Six Siege. Now all Unreal Engine developers can easily use these same technologies in your games thanks to UE4 integration. So yeah, I think that this is really exciting to hear and this is very good news because I think that we're kind of at a breaking point with DLSS where it's about to enter um, somewhat of mainstream adoption. You know, when it was first released, there weren't very many games that actually supported it. It didn't look that good. Now today, there's just more and more games getting added. Now they're going to actually be implementing it into an engine. So all these games that are going to be using Unreal Engine 4 are just going to be able to at least hopefully easily adopt this DLSS technology and implement it into their games, which, you know, to be honest with you, even if you don't like DLSS and you want to run native resolution, there's basically no downside to including this as an option in your games. It just allows people who, you know, can't really see the difference between, say, 4K native versus 4K DLSS to enable this and get maybe like a 50% boost in performance or something like that. It's just an incredible increase in performance. And then you take technologies like this. And then I made a video about another technology that came out, uh, mesh shaders, all these different things that can add a whole bunch of performance. And we could be looking at these video cards actually getting faster over time, which is really good to see. And with video cards like the RTX 
3060 having 12 gigabytes of VRAM, these cards could end up lasting a really, really long time, which is awesome because, you know, if you buy a card such as the RTX 3060, let's say you're able to get lucky and buy it for close to its MSRP, maybe you're able to get it for like $360 or $380 or something, well, that video card could over time get faster and faster with these technologies. That 12 gigabytes of VRAM allows it to, you know, stick around for quite some time. And, you know, maybe we're sitting here one, two, three years from now and you're still able to run ultra settings because you have enough VRAM. And then on top of that, with the enabling DLSS and using mesh shaders and all these other technologies, you're able to squeeze maybe another 80% performance out of that GPU that you originally couldn't without any DLSS or any mesh shaders or any variable rate shading or anything like that. So yeah, I think this is really awesome. And, you know, I've been saying this for a while, but once NVIDIA gets this toggled globally, I'll say it again, this is going to absolutely change everything. And I think that AMD really needs to start working on their technology. I know that they've been hinting that they are working on it, but they need to get it out ASAP. Even if it's not quite as good as DLSS, they absolutely need a competitor to it at this point, and they really need to get working on it fast, get it out soon, because, you know, without some sort of DLSS competitor, AMD is going to be absolutely left in the dust. And I'm just a little bit frustrated with Radeon, because as good as RDNA 2 is as an architecture, it's an absolutely awesome GPU. I believe overall it has better power efficiency than uh, NVIDIA's cards do, because NVIDIA seems to have basically pushed their cards to the absolute limit this time, whereas AMD seems to have not done that. So they have an awesome architecture, good performance per watt. They've got really good performance overall. The 6800 XT is an awesome card, but you can't find it anywhere. And once again, they're you know starting to fall behind in the software department, which is really just unfortunate because AMD had an absolute opportunity here to really reclaim a whole bunch of this desktop market. Unfortunately, they're not making enough cards. And then they're missing stuff like the last time I used an RX 6800 XT, it wasn't supporting Premiere Pro GPU acceleration correctly. So I unfortunately can't even use an AMD card until I can confirm that it works properly with the Adobe Premiere software. And then on top of that, they still don't have their DLSS competitor out, which, so I, you know, I really want to see AMD work on this because it's clear that DLSS is going to be the way forward. I think that it's a lot more impressive than things like ray tracing. I mean, ray tracing is interesting. It's, it's good and all, but DLSS to me is absolutely the game changer here. And I really hope that both these companies end up getting it working so you can just like go into the control panel, enable it and bang everything that you see on your monitor, maybe except for your desktop wallpaper is using DLSS and just saving a bunch of performance. I think that that would be really awesome. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about DLSS? Do you think that maybe Nvidia is going to pull ahead of AMD or do you think that AMD is going to be the first one to get it working globally? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.